Hey everyone, Douglas here, and welcome back to the MMT Macro Trader in this market recap. It is Thursday, December 1st, 2022. As we take a look at the market, yesterday was an amazing day. On, on Tuesday, during the live stream on Tuesday, I had mentioned that the uh, the, the Powell presser that was coming up on Wednesday uh, was likely going to be a pretty big inflection point for this market, that really you could see the market setting up uh, to really see what, uh, what uh, uh, Jay Powell had to say on Wednesday and kind of interpret that in, in, in one way or another, one direction or another, uh, we were going to see a pretty big move uh, as uh, as we finished uh, into the close. The comments were at 1.30 as we finished that day out. And certainly uh, yesterday did not disappoint. I think 3.5%, maybe almost 4% in the S&P from, uh, from when the announcement was made at 1.30 into the close. Uh, markets across the board just absolutely a tour higher. Today, pretty uh, pretty darn steady, a little bit of choppy, a uh, little bit of choppy market um, through the remainder of the day. Obviously, the uh, kind of the buzz on the street, if you will, the explanation for the rally, of course, is uh, uh, Powell's comment saying he's going to take the foot off the uh, Foot off the gas on the on the rate hike cycle. That's somehow going to be a net positive for the finance sector, and stocks are roaring. I have a slightly different interpretation in terms of exactly why we saw the rally that we did, and it really has to do with the hedging dynamics that are at play, uh, that kind of pin and, and really underpin the the price movement on a day to day basis. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But uh, suffice to say, when it comes to interest rates, you know, initially when the Fed starts its rate hike cycle, there is some impact on the way you would kind of the valuation of any given security relative to the risk-free rate. So uh, immediately on a rate hike cycle, you can see kind of a repricing of, uh, of individual securities based on, again, that, that risk-free rate. Uh, there's portfolio rebalancing um, strategies like risk parity strategies, strategies that will use uh, efficient frontier that have, whether it be like a, a net present value or some sort of discounted cash flow model built into them that is rates go higher uh, effectively since uh, since uh, treasuries are risk free if you can get 4 or 5% off of a treasury you're going to take that over any risk security and that will help uh, the overall balancing of a given portfolio so you will see oftentimes during a rate hike cycle a brief pullback in uh, in stocks as the rate hike cycle starts but once it kind of uh, once the initial shock wears off and you see the uh, uh, the overall kind of velocity of the rate hike uh, swing slow down you'll start to see the impact uh, the impact of those uh, of those rebalancings diminish and then you have then just kind of the underlying uh, once the repricing is done then just the underlying structural flows begin to kick in I think the structural flows have really been uh, kicking in stabilizing for quite a long time it's really this other element that we're about to talk about um, this hedging element that's really been what has been on a grip in this market really all the way back since June um, but uh, we really saw at least the Fiscal flows start to uh, start to turn the corner back in October, which is right when the market bottomed as well. But I think the big summary I want to make is I don't think the market was rallying because they think financial conditions are now going to improve. What really happened is you get this hedging activity that builds up uh, for various reasons. There is just a, essentially a wall of fear that builds this hedging activity up. People are taking out effectively insurance bets on the market. They're all thinking that the COVID sell-off that we had now uh, back at uh, in, in uh, what March of 2020 might happen again. So you get this kind of worry built up and you get a market that is just stuck in, uh, in negative gamma. And then when those, uh, when that uh, dynamic gives way, you can see massive moves very similar to what we did see on Wednesday. So what I want to do is I want to bring up my data dashboard real quick, and I'm going to go through a couple charts here to kind of explain what it is that I'm seeing here. And what I have today is the, the, the net gamma exposure at each individual price at each individual, individual strike of the S&P 500 as of the close of today. And what you can see is we have a massive build, a positive gamma at that 4,100 strikes. So that means likely there are quite a lot of calls that are being opened up above price that, uh, that require hedging activity from the dealers who are on the other side of this, uh, who are on the other side of this trade, what that does is that essentially creates a pretty uh, a pretty hefty ceiling on price. We actually saw this dynamic play out perfectly today. Uh, it, it, it creates the ceiling for price that is very difficult for price to get through that 4100 zone because what ends up happening is once you get up to that 100 uh, 4100 zone, uh, you have to dealers will will start to sell shares, and then the 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 dynamic that happens in terms of the volatility 
utility side is uh, once price begins to reject, the dealers have to re buy back those shares because the dealer is obviously in the opposite direction, doesn't want any directional risk. So if you've bet the market's going to go up and it goes up, the dealers are going to be selling and then vice versa. When price goes down, they're now losing money on whatever long they had to originally hedge. So they're going to go ahead and sell those very basic dynamic that is, uh, that is at play. And the other thing you can do is, is you can just see that uh, in net uh, positive gamma is outweighing negative gamma. And here's what I'm going to show you next is that this dynamic has been bouncing all over the place uh, for the last week or two. So hopefully uh, this comes across well in this video and I'm going to jump to a little slideshow here. So this is going back to the 18th. So this is a Friday on the 18th and you can see one where price was at and how the market's going to go. That's the vol shift model. The vol shift model, just a quick explanation, that's not a directional model. That is a model that is anticipating essentially tomorrow's, the, the, the overall price variance of tomorrow's move. So if it's, a, if it's a purple or a pink, that means it's anticipating a relatively big move. If it's blue, that means it's uh, anticipating a relatively small move. I call it the shift model because as you shift from uh, dark to blue or purple to blue, uh, that means you're getting into more of a, a condensed volatility market and then vice vice versa. Um, so just so you're aware of how that tracks. To the other side of that, though, is the net gamma distribution at each strike. And that is what the net gamma is that needs to be hedged out from the dealers. So I'm going to flip through these. These are taken from my daily dashboard that gets printed out every day on my Patreon. And I just went ahead and took a, a screenshot just to kind of show this dynamic playing out in time. Uh, but what you can see is as we kind of consolidated into the uh, into the uh, the rate hike decision, we saw some some minor fluctuations uh, that occurred in this uh, in this uh, net uh, we'll call it the net gamma distribution across each strike. Uh, you can see as we started to push up as we head into uh, as we head into Monday and Tuesday, heading into Thanksgiving, starting to see a, a little bit more gamma uh, build, positive gamma build above price, um, really kicking high as we finished off the um the thanksgiving week and then uh, i think this was actually the friday now uh, after thanksgiving and then if you remember on monday we really sold off and i think that's when a lot of the hedging activity started to get in place for what was going to be the fed announcement that happened on wednesday so you have a lot of people opening up effectively insurance puts and you see that negative gamma start to expand and start to push deeper um or more negatively underneath price with the largest uh with the largest being that 3600 uh 3600 line uh, increasing even deeper, decreasing even more, heading into Tuesday. And then finally on Wednesday, uh, we had the big shank out. So what ends up happening is those hedges get closed out, right? So the big news event occurs. It's a, I don't say a surprise to, to the upside, but whatever the traders interpret that as those who took out those kind of insurance bets interpreted that as a positive for the market. You see a collapse in the negative gamma. Likely those are puts that are being closed out. When those puts get closed out, the hedging activity uh, happens in reverse. So when you open a put, the dealer is going to sell shares uh, to hedge that activity because you're betting that the market's going lower. And as the market goes lower, they, they sell shares. So the unwinding of that is they buy back the shares that they sold. And that is why we had such a tremendous rally as we saw the gamma distribution um, completely push to a more positive gamma uh, setup with that 4100 strike building. And that is then exactly where you're going to end up seeing price likely find a ceiling, which is exactly what we saw. And then again, back to what we saw, uh, what we saw today as, um, whoops, what we saw today as price kind of settled off running into that ceiling right around 41, uh, 4100. So that is the dynamic that is at play. And one of the things, too, to keep in mind, and here's why uh, I think we could see an extended rally if we can really hold on through tomorrow. Yeah, probably make this point right now. Tomorrow is going to be a, another major data drop. We have jobs data coming out tomorrow. So bear in mind that even though we had a pretty good day uh, today in terms of just not giving back everything that we saw uh, again yesterday, tomorrow, uh, again, there's going to be a lot of hedging activity that's going to be in play as jobs data comes out uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but after that, if we can survive, I think we will see an extended rally heading into the end of OPEX. And the reason that I think it would head, at least in the end of OPEX, 
index, which would be December 16th of uh, December later this month in a couple weeks, is about a third of this entire gamma exposure that needs to be hedged uh, will fall off the books uh, as the options, the underlying options, begin to uh, begin to expire heading into uh, heading into the end of the month. Again, if we can kind of dodge the uh, the you know any negative effect from the job state, and we can continue to rally here, um, I, I really think we're set up, like I said, for for a rally going forward. Um, in part for a couple of reasons. One, the, the macro, um, the overall macro look just continues to improve. Uh, fiscal flows continue to be quite strong. Um, two, one of the other kind of dynamics that are at play is as uh, as you get closer and closer to uh, to options expiration, these things called charm flows begin to uh, kick in. There's a decay, a time decay in options um, that can oftentimes help uh, promote uh, kind of a, a more bullish lean as you get closer to the end of OPEX. And then the other thing would be the VANA flows as well as the uh, as the puts start to get closed out. Again, dealers are buying back the um, dealers are buying back those uh, those shares. So you're going to have a lot of hedging activity that is going to reinforce buying going forward. And uh, then on top of that, just going back for the entire year, we've been way over hedged. And so a lot of that over hedging uh, has the ability to dissipate if we finally get into kind of a more bullish look here and uh, we could see some reinforced buying for a little while. So tomorrow's going to be a big day. I mean, it could shake things up if, uh, if we can kind of survive that data and we can have a relatively stable day. I think we're really set up for a classic Santa rally heading into at least the December OPEX, that being again uh, December 12th, uh, in just a couple weeks here. So that's how I'm seeing things right now. And uh, obviously, you know, the data comes in every day and we reassess every day uh, well, you know, where we're at from a, a macro perspective. But uh, I thought I'd at least give my thoughts on what was actually driving that market rally and really what I think is going to drive things through the end of this month and 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 really in fact what has been driving things uh for the majority of this year has been this kind of negative gamma run that the market's been in because of the over hedging and we're starting to see that kind of shake out here and i do think if and when this uh, this uh, kind of over hedging finally gives way, that we're going to see one hell of a rally. Um, but uh, there are so many components that can go in uh, to any given rally or not. Um, you certainly need to be careful and, and you know uh, think risk management through, um, not to get uh, overly zealous. But when it does happen, I think we're due for uh, quite the bounce here. Those are my thoughts for tonight. Uh, a couple things on the way out. If, if you like what I'm doing here and you haven't yet hit subscribe, make sure and do that. And if you found this video particularly helpful, give it a thumbs up. And then the final thing too, if you're an active trader, active investor, you like the approach that I'm bringing to the markets, uh, this is going to be probably the last day or two, I'm gonna pull it up real quick, uh, to get in on the promo price for my Patreon over at patreon.com slash MMT macro trader. Technically, it ended <laughs> at the end of November, but I've been busy. Probably won't be able to switch it all over to the new pricing and the new tiers uh, until maybe tomorrow night, probably Saturday. So, um, yeah, if it's something you're interested in, that $25 tier, which will get you the highest access heading forward uh, forever. You'll always be at the top tier no matter what if you get in uh, before I go ahead and shut this off and uh, go back to the, the, prior, uh, the prior price get in and um, and go ahead and lock that in if that's something you're interested in. Otherwise, that's all I have for today's update. So until next time, good trading, and we'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.